Looking at recent activity around Starbase, there's a strong chance that the Starship Tanker variant is on the way. But what is a Starship Tanker? The Starship Tanker is a specialized variant of SpaceX's Starship designed exclusively for in-orbit refueling. It plays a critical role in enabling missions beyond low Earth orbit, including journeys to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. By transferring propellant and oxidizer to other starships in space, whether they carry cargo or crew, the tanker extends their range and mission capabilities. This refueling process is essential for long-duration missions, especially as part of NASA's Artemis program, where the tanker will help refuel the human landing system, HLS, on its way to the lunar surface. In short, it is a starship built purely to deliver fuel where it is needed most, space. The Starship Tanker is equipped with six Raptor engines, three sea-level Raptors, and three Raptor vacuum engines optimized for space operations. In future versions, SpaceX plans to add three additional Raptor vacuum engines to further reduce gravity losses and improve in-space performance. The tanker is designed to carry a large amount of propellant, with its payload volume primarily dedicated to storing fuel. In 2024, Elon Musk shared an update on the version 3 Starship tanker, stating, The propellant tanker version will be especially heavy as the payload volume in the forward section will mostly contain propellant. Thrust goal will be approximately 10,000 tons, three times Saturn V, and liftoff mass of tanker version approximately 7,000 tons. This should be capable of approximately 200 tons of orbital refilling. Note, 3% of liftoff mass as useful cargo would be insanely good for a fully reusable orbital rocket. Most expendable rockets aren't that good. So far, there are two potential design approaches for the Starship tanker. One possibility is that the tanker will be nearly identical to a standard Starship with large methane and oxygen bladders placed in the payload section. Another approach involves enlarging the internal methane and oxygen tanks themselves. Both configurations have been mentioned by Elon Musk, but which design SpaceX will ultimately adopt has yet to be confirmed. The tanker includes docking connectors for ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer. Unlike the HLS or depot variants, it retains re-entry capabilities with a heat shield and flaps for reusability. A while ago, a double ring section was moved out of SpaceX's Star Factory for scrapping. Notably, it featured docking connectors similar to those seen in official Starship tanker renders, but it may not actually be the fuel transfer tube. According to a propellant transfer render shown in SpaceX's May update presentation, the setup features four visible docking attachment points. The two forward points are used for alignment, while the two located near the aft section contain the fuel transfer lines. This system appears to use a straightforward probe and drogue design, a reliable method commonly used in both spaceflight and aerial refueling. These connectors are likely intended to align and secure two starships during orbital propellant transfer it's reasonable to expect another pair of attachment points higher up the vehicle to complete the system. Fuel transfer between vehicles will be accomplished using pressure differentials between the donor and recipient tanks, removing the need for complex pumps and simplifying the overall system. So, when might we realistically see a Starship tanker in action? Once a fully functional Starship is flying reliably, modifying it into a tanker variant could happen relatively quickly and with minimal changes. Recent hardware sightings suggest preparations may already be underway. One notable development is a new liquid oxygen LOX pump farm located near the methane and oxygen storage tanks. This system is responsible for pumping supercooled, highly pressurized liquid oxygen to both the Starship and its booster. Observers have noted that the pump system dedicated to the upper stage appears to have more pumps than what a standard Starship would require. This discrepancy has led to speculation that the system is being built with the needs of the Starship tanker in mind, which will need to handle significantly more propellant for in-orbit refueling missions. During the Starship's third integrated flight, SpaceX demonstrated an intravehicular propellant transfer in orbit. 
meaning that propellant was transferred within the spacecraft. According to SpaceX, the first orbital demonstration of propellant transfer is expected sometime next year. If that timeline holds, we can reasonably expect the first Starship tanker variant to be ready by then as well. While building the Starship tanker variant is relatively straightforward, essentially a modified Starship optimized to carry more fuel. The real engineering challenge lies in developing the Starship Depot. This version of Starship would be optimized for long-term fuel storage in orbit and would serve as a refueling hub for deep space missions. Unlike the tanker, the depot is not intended to return to Earth. The Starship Depot would function as an orbital gas station, allowing multiple spacecraft to dock, refuel, and continue their missions to destinations such as the Moon, Mars, or even deeper into the solar system. While it might look similar to the tanker, or even the HLS, Human Landing System variant, the Depot would exclude elements like flaps and heat shields, since it does not need to survive re-entry. However, it would require many additional systems to perform its role effectively. A major technical hurdle is managing cryogenic boil-off, the gradual evaporation of supercooled propellants like liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Even a few days of delay can result in enough boil-off to compromise a mission. For lunar or Martian missions, which require storing tens to hundreds of tons of propellant over weeks or months, this becomes a serious issue. To combat boil-off, the depot will likely need advanced insulation systems. Conventional insulation like SOFI EE, spray-on foam insulation, has high heat leakage and limited durability. In contrast, Launch Vehicle MLI offers high thermal performance and is robust enough to survive launch environments, making it a strong candidate for the depot's external insulation. The depot would also need a reliable power source to operate its systems over long durations in space. This would likely include arrays of solar panels, similar to those used on other long-duration spacecraft. In terms of appearance, the Starship Depot might resemble the HLS variant, but without the lunar landing hardware. Now, even if SpaceX successfully builds both the Starship tanker and depot variants, orbital refueling remains one of the most challenging aspects of the architecture. According to Elon Musk, fully refueling a Starship could require up to eight tanker launches. This estimate is based on the Block 2 Starship design, which carries approximately 1,500 metric tons of liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Each tanker is reportedly capable of delivering up to 200 metric tons of propellant to orbit. However, that figure assumes ideal conditions with no losses. In reality, boil-off, the gradual evaporation of cryogenic propellants, is unavoidable even with advanced insulation. While protective thermal layers can reduce heat transfer, eliminating boil-off entirely is nearly impossible. This issue is already a major concern on Earth and becomes significantly more complex in space. According to SpaceX's current approach, Starship tankers and depot variants will dock side by side. Each vehicle is around 50 meters long, so aligning and securely connecting them in orbit is a precise and demanding task. It is more complicated than traditional spacecraft docking operations like those performed with the International Space Station. Once docked, the challenge shifts to transferring cryogenic propellants such as liquid oxygen and liquid methane. These substances must remain below their boiling points during transfer or they will start to vaporize, increasing pressure inside the fuel lines and raising the risk of leaks or ruptures. The entire transfer system must be highly leak-resistant and thermally stable. On Earth, cryogenic fueling operations rely on extensive ground support systems and teams of technicians. Despite this, even well-established launch providers encounter problems. For example, the hydrogen leaks that delayed NASA's Artemis 1 mission. In orbit, none of that infrastructure or human support is available. Starships will need to carry all required hardware on board and execute the entire fueling process autonomously. As former NASA Administrator Mike Griffin stated during a hearing before the House Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee, the more refueling launches a mission requires, the higher the cumulative risk of failure. 
even with a hypothetical 98% success rate per launch and fuel transfer, which is an optimistic assumption, a mission requiring 15 to 20 such operations would have only a 74 to 67% chance of success. Despite the difficulty, SpaceX sees orbital refueling as essential. As Elon Musk explained during the 67th International Astronautical Congress in 2016, without refilling in orbit, you would have a half order of magnitude impact roughly on the cost. By half of a magnitude, I think the audience mostly knows. But what that means is that each order of magnitude is a factor of 10. So, not refilling in orbit would mean a 500% roughly, increase in the cost per ticket. Orbital refueling is not only essential for future deep space missions, it is also becoming a key strategic capability in spaceflight. China appears to be making significant progress in this area. Recently, two Chinese satellites, Xijian-21 and Xijian-25, maneuvered toward each other in geostationary orbit, possibly as part of an on-orbit refueling demonstration. U.S. surveillance satellites were also observed in the vicinity, highlighting international interest in the activity. The two Shijian spacecraft had been moving toward one another in geosynchronous orbit approximately 22,236 miles above Earth's equator. Ground-based optical tracking from the Space Situational Awareness Company, S2A Systems, detected a close approach on June 14th. At times, the two satellites appeared visually indistinguishable from each other, suggesting they conducted at least a test run of a rendezvous and possibly a docking and undocking maneuver. This test is believed to be part of a larger effort to develop on-orbit refueling and satellite servicing technologies, which would allow for mission extensions and greater sustainability in space operations. Shijian-25 launched in January 2024, is specifically designed to demonstrate refueling and servicing capabilities in orbit. Shijian-21, launched in 2021, had already shown advanced maneuvering by towing a defunct satellite into a higher graveyard orbit. China's recent test marks a significant step toward long-term space sustainability and shows that it, too, recognizes the importance of mastering orbital refueling for future missions. When we take the next step in space exploration, we often venture into areas where our knowledge is limited and our experience is minimal. Orbital refueling is one such frontier. Naturally, there will be many trials and failures along the way. But once we gain a solid understanding, it becomes a major leap toward our ultimate goal. All it takes is commitment. If you've made it this far, I truly appreciate your time and interest. I'm glad to know this video has been helpful to you. We're on our way to reaching our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so feel free to support us by hitting the subscribe button. It really makes a big difference. Thank you.